Today, as we move forward in our study on our identity in Christ, we're going to touch upon a very important part of this whole revelation. You see, many of us understand substitution in Scripture. We understand substitution, which means one for or on behalf of the many. So Christ was our substitute. Christ died for the sins of many and He paid the price for all our sins. And because of what He did, we enjoy the blessing of forgiveness and salvation and so on. So substitution, one on behalf of the many. But the scriptures also talk about another aspect of truth, which we call as identification. Identification is many in the one, so that what happened to the one affects the many. One man, Adam, sinned, all were made sinners, all were brought unto death. What happened to the one affected the many. But the Bible also says, one man, Jesus, referred to as the last Adam, he, by one man, he was obedient and many in him were made righteous. The natural man, in the natural, we are identified with Adam, so that what happened to Adam affects all of us. The new creation man is identified in Christ. So that what happened to Christ is extended to the entire new creation. The new creation, which is you and I, we as believers are identified in Christ, in His death, in His burial, in His resurrection, in His ascension, and in His exaltation at the right hand of the Father. So, when Christ died, you and I died. When Christ was buried, you and I were buried. When Christ was resurrected, you and I were resurrected. When Christ ascended, you and I ascended. When Christ was seated at the right hand of the Father, you and I were seated with Him in the heavenly realms. Now, this is the spiritual, not the natural. The natural identifies with Adam, the spiritual new creation identifies with Christ. What does that mean and how does that affect our lives practically today? We're going to discover from Romans chapter 6. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Now notice he says, you know, you were slaves of sin. But then what did you do? You obeyed from the heart. What did you obey from the heart? The doctrine, the teaching to which you were delivered. And what did that teaching do? It set you free from sin. So this teaching, what Paul is unveiling to us in Romans chapter 6 and then eventually expands it in Romans 8, is that teaching, this form of doctrine, this mold that will transform somebody who's a slave to sin to be somebody who's totally free from sin and walking in righteousness. Understand that we are identified with Christ. We are identified with Him in His death, in His burial, His resurrection. Identified. So, but what does that mean? I'm identified with Him in His death. He begins to explain in verse 6. I'm going to spend some time in that, knowing this. So every believer needs to know this. And today, if you are listening, you need to know this. Know what? That our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we no longer should be slaves of sin. You and I must understand that the old man was crucified with Jesus so that the body of sin, the power of sin over our lives must be broken. And what is the result? So that we should no longer be slaves of sin. 
and he says, we have been buried with him. When Christ was buried, you were buried. That means the old, you left the old, you stepped into the new. You, the old has no more claim over your life. Sin will not have dominion over me. I know this truth. I accept it as a fact. I yield myself to this truth. That that sin, I refuse to yield my members as a slave to that sin. I don't need to and I refuse to do it. But instead, I yield my members, my body, as an instrument of righteousness. Because that is truth.